Did you have a good Thanksgiving, Dr. Valitas? Uh, yeah, um, it was a little bit strange because um, usually we have a, a, a household full of people, all the international people that work with me and, and that work with other faculty, um, usually about 20 people at my house, and it was just my wife and, uh, and I and me this year. Our daughters were not able to get here. It was a little bit odd, but it was nice. Next year. Okay, um, let's go ahead and get started um, because we've got quite a bit to cover today. Um, today we're, we're going to be working on um, the non-steady state, non-conservative problems. And uh, I'm going to share my screen and briefly uh, go through um, the new equation we'll be using because this is a more complicated equation. And then we'll work um, an example problem uh, on the board, and hopefully we'll get that done in, in time for class today. If not, we'll, um, we'll uh, continue on Wednesday. Um, so on Wednesday, we'll have uh, our normal two-hour period. Um, Dr. Franklin will be leading a discussion on um, the collapse chapter about Rwanda. And then we'll continue with this problem solving, and uh, we'll start working on problems seven and eight. Uh, that you have do as homework problems. So we can hopefully get um, at least part of those done in, in the class period on Thursday, excuse me, on Wednesday. And if necessary, we can continue those on Friday. But essentially, once we get done with this material, um, we're done with the material for the class. So it, it doesn't look likely unless people want to have a, you know, a problem solving session on Monday or Tuesday, we won't need to meet um, next week at all. So, hey, Dr. Franklin, I just noticed that you had joined us. Yeah, sorry, it took me a little bit. I had different MiFi's. Had to go from three different sources to see which yeah, one. Yeah, that's me... okay. That's okay. It's understandable. So, um, okay. So, you know, up until now, we've we've covered these two equations, which is the steady state conservative system and the steady state non-conservative system. And uh, the, the the very vast majority of you did really well on the homework problems. Um, so hopefully uh, you understand how to apply these two equations. Um, so now what we're going to do is look at a more of a real world problem, which is a non steady state, non conservative type problem. And um, let me see, we'll put the chat up in case there's some questions from the chat. Um, so th this has the input rate, the output rate, the decay rate, and uh, and the accumulation rate. So the, the, the accumulation rate is the new term that we'll be introducing here. And I, I've shifted the slides around a little bit from what I um, originally put up to ELC. I have this new version up on ELC. Uh, in the original version, I had all the derivations of how we got to the next step. Um, and I just don't really think it's necessary for me to go through the derivation with you. I think it's more important that we learn how to apply the equation. So if you're following on with the original set of slides, you, this may be a little bit out of sequence, um, but just jump to um, uh, just jump to to this slide here. We'll talk about this if you're following along with slides. So, in this real world situation, what we're going to be looking at is what happens in any one of these systems, like we've been evaluating a river or a lake. If you know we've got steady state conditions like we've been working with. And then we start adding a pollutant. So up until now, we've ignored the part of the problem where the change occurs and we've jumped all the way to the end where we reach a steady state condition again. We're gonna learn how to solve for the difference, the concentration changes as we go through this transition period. So in this example problem, we have steady state conditions here, right? So this is the concentration that's not changing. And then all of a sudden we do something like we turn on the pipe and stuff starts falling to the lake, like effluent from a wastewater treatment plant. And the concentration is going to increase pretty sharply at first and then start to reach an equilibrium. And at some point, we're gonna reach a new equilibrium state. Um, but we wanna know what happens here in this transition period. So the new equation we're introducing today is going to be how we calculate these different points, okay, on the curve. To do that, we still have to know what the initial equilibrium condition was, and we still have to know what the final equilibrium condition was. So in fact, to solve these problems, we actually have, we have to solve 
three different equations. We have to solve the steady state non-conservative system for this period, and we have to solve it for this period, and then we use those two concentrations to solve for what's going on in between. Okay, so it's more work, but it's really not that much more complicated. As long as you remember in your head that we have to solve for these initial conditions and the steady state conditions at the end first, and then use those numbers for the, this transient period. So what this shows here is that the change in concentration over time becomes zero, so we've reached equilibrium. Um, we designate this sometimes as the concentration at time equals infinity, because that's where we're going to assume that concentration essentially becomes um, the same, doesn't change anymore, but in real life, this time could be 20 hours, 20 days, 20 years, you know, depending on what's going on. And then time zero is when we start adding the pollutant. So, so in this particular model here, let's say we have a lake that has a stream coming in with no pollution or very little pollution from the stream. And then at some point, the pipe that's also dumping into the lake gets turned on, all this effluent comes in. We could have the opposite condition where the pipe has been dumping into the lake for a long time. So we've reached steady state conditions and at some point we start reducing the flow of the pipe. We either turn it off completely or we reduce it to half, to a quarter or whatever. And so now the concentration over time in that lake changes and reaches a new equilibrium at, you know, at some time in the future. Right, so everybody understand what we're, what's going on here in terms of how we're setting up the problem? Okay, good. Um, so really, I mean, this sounds intimidating, but it's not, it's not intimidating. As long as we remember, we have to solve essentially three equations, one for this phase, one for this phase, and then one for this transient phase. So, um, this initial phase, we're going to be solving the equation we've already used. For the final phase, we're going to be solving for the equation we've already used. You just have to put in the right numbers, basically. So we're not doing anything different. Sometimes the, um, the nomenclature, you know, the variables we use to designate these different time periods gets to be a little confusing. So it, it probably helps a lot. If you spend just a little bit of time familiarizing yourself with what all these mean. So C initial or C at time zero or C at time equals zero um, all mean the concentration here before we do the action, before we either turn the pipe on or turn the pipe off. Right? So it's this concentration here. So C at infinity or C final, or C at T equals infinity, is this concentration here. So in the equation we will be using on the next step to, to calculate what goes on in here, we will be using these terms, C at time zero, and C at infinity. And that designates again the concentration here, and the concentration here. Right, so if you remember what those two variables mean, you're gonna have almost no trouble at all with this problem. After this just becomes an arithmetic problem of punching the right numbers into a calculator and that's all it becomes. Okay. So this here is also called, when we change something, it's called the step function. This part here, as you can see, it's nonlinear. It's in fact, it's exponential. The change is exponential. And so the equation that we solve for here is a differential equation and we are using just the solution. We're not going to present the differential equation to you or try to go through the steps that come up with the solution. I'm just going to present the, differential, the, the solution of the differential equation to you. If you want to see the intermediate steps, go back to those slides that I mentioned where, the, where we do the derivation. Okay, so here's the equation. Um, it looks a little intimidating, but it's not. Um, so this is for the period from time zero to time infinity. So again, the period here that's in the blue, right? Where, where things are changing until we reach a, a new equilibrium. So what we do here is this, this part means the concentration 
at any given time during that transition period. So it could be the concentration at this time, or at this time, or at this time, or at this time, or at this time. We can solve for any of those concentrations, provided we know what time we're solving for with that equation. So the time that we're solving for, T, here, comes into the equation right here. This is the time for which we are solving this equation. This is the answer that we'll get, the concentration of time t. The time t enters the equation right here. Okay. So, um, c at infinity, so this is at equilibrium after the change has happened. c at time zero, which is before the change happens. Again, c, uh -oh, my mouse. c at equilibrium. And then here is sort of the tricky part because we have brackets and parentheses. So we have the reaction rate coefficient. This is the flow through the system, right? And V is the volume of the lake. If we're talking about a lake, if we're talking about a river, we won't have this. And then this is the time. So the tricky part really here now is figuring out how to put the variables in, making sure you've got the right parentheses and brackets around these equations, and that you take this exponent correctly. So this is always going to be a negative value. So e to the minus something, when we calculate this out here, it's going to be a value, and we're going to take e to the minus that value. So you're going to have to learn on your calculator or on your phone how to do this uh, function. And then after that, it's just arithmetic multiplication, nothing, nothing more complicated. Does everybody understand what this equation means and what we're solving for? Okay, if you have a question about the equation, now's the time to ask, because I'm gonna to move to solving a problem. And, and of course, we can discuss it during that time, but it's better if you understand exactly what we're solving for. All right, is everybody okay? All right, so then what I'm gonna do now is give me just a, about 30 seconds. I need to move the whiteboard back into position and change camera angles so that um, you're, you're able to, uh, to see what's going on. All right, I'm going to um, stop sharing screen and I'm gonna move this over there so I can see everybody. change the camera. All right, looks like I have to adjust the camera a minute. Just give me a sec, because it's not quite right for the board. Dr. Valides, do you have a sore throat? I do not have a sore throat. Does someone like have a sore throat? Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have a little bit of congestion, but I don't know why that is. I, I, I don't feel ill. Okay, good. And my throat is not really sore. Are you able to see the whole board now? 
Yeah, right? Yeah, we can. Okay, good. Okay, so um, this example, so if you want to be able to see just the board, you know, you can change it from gallery view to speaker view, so you can see um, the board. So the problem we'll be doing now is a repeat of the problem we did earlier, which was that leg problem. So uh, just to save a little time, I've redrawn the problem here. And uh, we have this lake. Um, it has a stream flowing in it that has a steady state flow of five cubic meters per second and a concentration of 10 milligrams per liter. Um, there's a pipe coming in that has a flow rate of 0 0.5 cubic meters per second and a concentration of 100 milligrams per liter. And uh, we solved the other day for QM and CM, and we got a number that we'll solve for again today, just to refresh our memories. And the lake has a volume of 10 times 10 to the 6 cubic meters, and the reaction rate coefficient is 0 0.20 per day. So what's going to happen to this problem is we're going to solve for the transition period after we turn the, the pipe off. So the pipe has been coming in. Now what we're gonna do is turn the pipe off and calculate what happens in the transition period, but also we have to calculate, of course, what happens at the end. So if you think about that diagram that, that I was showing you on the, on, on the PowerPoint slide, essentially what we have, you know, our ending graph would be something like this. We start out at a concentration here, zero, concentration and time zero, and then we turn the pipe off and essentially what's going to happen is the concentration is going to go down and down and down and then equilibrate. And then we're going to get concentration of a time equals infinity. So time equals infinity here. And then time equals zero here, right? So we're going to be calculating what happens in here. But first we have to calculate this and then we have to calculate that. Everybody on board with that? Okay, so um, I'm gonna erase this little schematic here. So we have room. To do our calculations. So somebody tell me how we start out calculating C at time equals zero. In other words, the conditions as they are right now. Don't we have to find QM? Okay, so QM. I need to find out QM. Very good. So we have QS plus QW equals QM. And what are those numbers? Somebody tell me what QS and QW are, if you can see the five. number. We got five. Five. Meter cube per second plus 0.5. Very good. That gives us 5.5. See, I dropped my units here, which is bad. 5.5 cubic meters per second. Okay. Um, sorry about the noise of the board. Move the microphone a little bit further away. Okay. So the equation we're going to apply is this one up here, right? Because we are at steady state conditions at the beginning, and we're steady state conditions at time equals infinity. So this is our equation that we apply. It's steady state, non-conservative. And so we've got this case CMV here for non-conservative. So let's solve it for time equals zero. Okay, so at time equals zero, T equals zero. So somebody read me out the numbers so that I can complete this equation. CS equals? 10 milligrams. 10 milligrams per liter. Okay, and then my QS is five cubic meters per second. Plus, what is my, go ahead, to, go ahead. It's 100 milligrams per liter. 100 milligrams per liter times 0 0.5 meters cubed per second. Or 
Court is not cooperating today. Put the lid on the pin for a second. Yeah, but it's because I just cleaned it here and it's filled okay. somewhat wet. When I raise my pupil graph. Okay. Equals um, CM, which we don't know. QM, which Caroline asked us to solve, which is 5.5 .5 meters Q per second. Plus, okay, so I, I uh, just to save us a little time, I converted the K from 0.2 per day to um, per second, so we don't have to spend time doing that today, right? So I already have that in terms of seconds. 2.31 times 10 to the minus six per second. C, M, and V was what? 10 times 10 to the six. Okay, 10 times 10 to the six meters cubed, right? So you remember we've solved this, it's all, we can pretty much do it in our heads here. We've got 10 times five is 50, and then 100 times 0.5, is five, so we have, is that right? 100 times 0.5 is 50, so we have 100, right? Yeah. 100 milligrams per liter, meters cubed per second equals, so 2.3 times 10 to the minus six, times 10 times 10 to the minus six, the 10 to the minus six, the 10 to the six go away, so we have 2.31 times 10, which is 23.1, plus 5.5 is 28.1. So we have CM 28.1 meters cubed per second. Did I do that correctly? Yeah, you did. Okay, so then somebody divide 100 by 28 for me. Um, I got 3.56. Yeah, okay, 3.5 equals 3.56 milligrams it, per liter. Should it, should it not be 28.6? Yeah, it should be 28.6, you're right. Thank you. So now the answer is what? 3.5, right? Rather 3.56. It's so easy to make mistakes when you do this in your head. <laughs> and I'm just kind of going through this quickly so that we can get to the more complicated equation. All right, so this is our concentration at time equals zero, right? This is the initial condition before we change anything. Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay, so, um, the next step before we can solve the exponential equation is we have to calculate what the equilibrium condition is once we turn off the pipe and everything has gone to steady state again. Okay, so let's start again. So now we're solving for time equals infinity, when we have changed the condition. So what happens when we change the condition here is that we've turned the pipe off, right? And so what happens to our QM? It's equal to QS. That's right, because we don't have a QW anymore. So if we look at this equation here, the QS plus QW equals QM. Basically our QW has gone away and we have QS equals QM. So our QS and our QM are the same. So I'm going to redo this, this equation. So we have 10 milligrams per liter times five 
cubic meters per second. And I don't have a C, W, and QW term, right? Because it's zero. I don't have a QW, so I don't have a CW. Equals CM times QM, which is five meters cubed per second, plus 2.31 times 10 to the minus six per second times 10 to the 10 to the six times, oops, meters cubed times CM. So this is pretty easy over here. I can do that one in my head without too many problems. Milligrams per liter meters cubed per second. Can you still see that? Yeah. Equals, so the 10 to the minus six and 10 to the six cancel out. So I have 23.1 plus five. So now I have the 28.1 instead of the 28.6, right? Equals CM 28.1 meters cubed per second. So what is our new CM? I got 1.8 milligrams per liter. Somebody check that to make sure we did this correctly. I got 1.78. Okay, all right. What was it say 1.8 to be close, to make it easier on later calculations? So, so what you can see now, what you have to do in your heads is say, okay, does this make sense, right? Remember, these are simulating real life conditions. So we have the pot coming in, and then with the pot coming in, our steady state condition was three and a half milligrams per liter because we had the outflow of the pipe and the stream pollution coming together and then they were decaying over time. A steady state was three and a half. Now we turn off the pipe. So we, all we have is the stream pollution coming in and that decays over time and then we have 1.8. So physically this makes sense. Even if you didn't get the right number numerically because you made a math error, physically it makes sense, right? So you have a lower value here because you turn the pipe off. If for some reason you had gotten a bigger number here, you would say, uh oh, I did something wrong because I've turned the pipe off and I should have a smaller number. Okay, and it's very important now when you finish Dr. these. Dr. Valetis? Yes. Can we, this might complicate things a little bit, but what if the pipe coming in was at a lower concentration than the stream coming in? That, that would be a perfectly reasonable condition to have. So, um, I mean, this would work out. So let's say here in the initial condition, our stream had 10 and our pipe, when we set up the problem at 100, but you could change this. So instead of 10, you could say five, right? Still, you would have here some number that probably would be lower than 3.5 since your pollution coming with the pipe would be a lot lower. But if you turn that pipe off, you would still get 1.8 here. So this number, the 1.8 would not change. What would change would be your, your initial condition because your pipe would, be, would have been providing a lower concentration of pollutant. Thank you. So, yeah, for this example, we can solve it very easily, right? All we have to do is put five in there. So we have, instead of, um, instead of 100, we have 12.5. Um, no. Um, Just do 0.1 instead of five or one. Yeah, so we have 50 plus, um, so we would have 52.5 divided by 28.6, whatever that is. And that would be our initial concentration if we had that, that situation. Yeah, great. Okay, so now we're ready for the big time, right? We're ready to go and, and, and apply these numbers to the big equation. So I'm gonna have to move this forward, so I'm gonna move the board.
Okay, so the equation is already here, the complicated equation. So let's transfer over our C0 and our C infinity. Does anybody remember what those numbers were? C0 is 3.5. 3.5, and let's never forget our units, because the units will make sure you do this stuff right here. And our C infinity was what? 1.8 milligrams per liter. 1.8 milligrams per liter. Okay, so now all we have to do is make sure we don't screw up putting the numbers in this equation. That's really all there is to it. And um, Let's, let's start out um, by solving for this term here, because this is really where all the complications occur. So I'm going to go over here and say E. You can see that? E? Yeah. E equals, excuse me, E bracket to the minus K. All right, we already have K. Does anybody remember what that was? Two point, um, crap. It's on the back of the board somewhere. You want it in day or seconds? Seconds. Um, 2.31. Well, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see what the problem, no, no, no. Very good point, very good point. I jumped the gun. So actually, let's think about this. We want to have good un the same units. And what we're going to be solving here for the time you want your K to be in the same units as this. So you have to look at your problem statement and, and the problem statement will tell you, you need to solve this for the next day, for the next week, for the next month, for the next minute. So in, in this example problem that I have here, we're solving in days, okay? So we want the K in, in days. So it's 0 0.20 per day. Okay, 0 0.20 per day, per day. Okay, I write it over here on the, on the left so I can keep it in mind, but you can't see it, but jot it down in your notes. Okay, so we'll have day per day here. We'll have day here. What units is our Q in? So Q is our QM here, right? Our QM, our QM was in, what was our QM for the, without the pipe running? Um, five meters cubed per second. Okay, so five cubic meters per second. So we've got a compatibility problem, right? We have units of, of seconds here and, and day here and day here. So we have to make the decision of what we're going to convert. Because we, we want our answers, typically, when you solve this problem, you're gonna be plotting many points along that transition curve, and those are gonna be given to you likely in days. I'd stick to days and convert meters per second to days. So let's do that first. We'll do right over here. We'll say um, Q, well, so, five meters cubed per second times 3,600 seconds per hour times 24 hours per day equals, somebody do that wonderful calculation for us. I got 4.32 times 10 to the same. 10 to the sixth. 4.32 times 10 to the sixth meters cubed per day. Would somebody verify that calculation so that we don't start off on the wrong path? That's what I got too. Actually, it might have been to the fifth. Yeah, I think it's to the fifth. Yeah, I got to the fifth. Okay. I got to the fifth. So easy to make these mistakes. So now we start plugging things into our equation, okay? So don't forget this minus sign, very important. So we have 0 0.2 per day, 
bus. 4.32 times 10 to the fifth meters cube per day divided by what was the volume? 10 times 10 to the sixth. 10 times 10 to the sixth meters cubed. And then we're going to solve this for a particular time. So we'll leave that as T for now, okay? So let's go ahead and, and simplify this right here. So one way to keep, make sure you don't make mistakes is to take this extra step and do 4.32 times 10 to the fifth meters cubed per day. And you bring the bottom up into the numerator so that you don't have any complications. So when you bring it up into the numerator, all you do is you change the sign of the exponent, excuse me, yeah, and um, meters cubed. Okay, I'm not bringing the units up. If I brought the units up, I would make it into, into n to the minus here. I'm just leaving them in the denominator. So the units stay like that, they cancel out. And that's good because I want to have units per day because that has to match that. Send, so then I have um, 4.32 times 10 is 43.2. And then I have times 10 to the minus 1. Does that work out right? Or did I make a mistake somewhere? I think that's right. So that's, this becomes What is our T, Dr. Velitas? So our T is whatever we're going to solve for. So we could, what we're trying to go do is try and, and, and reduce this so we have a number here and then we can use many different T's. For example, we could use T equals one day, T equals two day, T equals three day. So we want to set up the equation. So all we have to do that later is put in the T and solve for it. All right, so the T that we're going to solve for here could be, we're going to solve, let's say for C equals seven days. But for right now, just leave the variable in. All right, somebody, so it's going to be, a, are you saying it's going to be a whole number? Well, it could be, it could be an integer or it could be like 2.5 days or, you know, 0.3 days. It could just be whatever. But it's going to be in terms of units of days because that's what we decided to change everything into. Thank you. Okay, so somebody tell me again because I lost track what we're doing here. It's, so 43, uh, um, 43, 10 to the minus 1, so it's 4.32. Per day, right? Is that yeah. what we end up with? That's what I got. Okay, and then we have 0 0.2 per day. And that's inside here. And then we have T. And then So we're still on those terms. So this becomes e to the minus that doesn't sound right. 4.52 t per day. Is that correct? Should the 10 times 10 to the 6 be 10 to the negative 1? Okay, so let's just say 
what I did was I took four and 10, multiplied them together, and I got 43, right? And then I had 10 to the fifth and 10 to the minus six, which gave me 10 to the minus one. So 43.2 times 10 to the minus one is 4.32. But, but when you brought that 10 to the numerator, shouldn't you have changed it to 10 to the negative one? No, what, what you change is, oh. Uh, because the way I did it is I multiplied them to uh, 10 to You're seven. absolutely correct, absolutely. So you're absolutely correct, I made a mistake. So what I really should have done is I should have changed this to 10 to the seventh. That didn't sound right to me here. I should have changed that to 10 to the seventh, and then what I would have had up here would be just 10 to the minus seven. And that would have, yeah, because you're right, it has to be 10 to the minus one. You're absolutely right, because I didn't change that. So 10 to the minus seven up here, so this becomes zero point, no, let me erase it, because you won't be able to see with all my scratch in there. Zero point four three two, is that what you, you got? Um, yes. Yes, that's correct. So then this becomes, Um, 0 0.632, right? Once you combine the two terms together. I haven't done that yet. What? Uh, I haven't done that yet, so. But. All right, so, so I'm sorry for the confusion here. So everybody follow what we've done. See, the, the tricky part here is not the, the equation, it's just a simple arithmetic because you've got so much stuff going on. So let's start again. We, we, we're going to try to simplify this part. So I, I write it back down here and I start filling in the terms. So we have 0 0.2 per day plus Q, which is 4.32 times 10 to the fifth meters Q per day, which we calculated here by converting our QM from meters per second to meters Q per day. And then we divide by the volume, which was 10 times 10 to the six meters cube. We change that to 10 to the seventh meters cube to make it simple. And then I brought the 10 to the seventh in the numerator and became 10 to the minus seventh. And you multiply this out and it becomes 4.32 times 10 to the minus two. So shouldn't it be 0 0.04? Hmm? Shouldn't this be 0 0.0432, not 0 0.432? Yes. Yes. Because we have 10 to the minus seven and 10 to the fifth here, which makes it 4.32 this, becomes 4.32 times 10 to the minus 2. So this is 0 0.043. And the reason I leave it like that so we can combine here, so we have 0.043. This is really not quadrating today at all. Zero point two four three T per day. All right, that's more like it, I believe. Yes, that's what I have. All right, is everybody lost or is everybody following along? You have questions? So like with the ten to the ten to the six or ten times ten to the six. Yes. You can't move the 10, like you can't flip it. You can only flip the exponent. No, you can flip the 10. And that's the mistake I originally made that, um, who caught me on that mistake? I can't really see, was it Addison? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so what I did at first um, was that I brought the 10 up without making it a minus one. And I brought up the 10 to the, to the six and made it a 10 to the minus six. So I should have had 10 to the minus one 
times 10 to the minus 6, which is 10 to the minus 7. So it's just simpler that I that we just combine them down here as 10 to the 7 and just bring it up as 10 to the minus 7. But either way you do it is fine, as, as long as you keep track of what you're doing. So this is what happens if you're solving this in real time instead of you know, trying to follow along a sheet um, with all the answers. You, you make all these mistakes all the time. Dr. Valides? Yes. I am ready for Wednesday, but I'm wondering if we should continue this through Wednesday and do collapse on Friday. That's fine. We can do that. I think that might flow better for everybody. Yeah, or, or we could split the session again, whatever you prefer. I guess I'm okay with the students deciding too, if you want. Do you want to, I mean, it's hard to cut this off and come back to it is what I would yeah. think. But. Okay, so let's, um, let's plan to, um, to spend, um, whatever time we need on Wednesday solving this. We're almost done now. I mean, we've only got two minutes left in the class period, so we'll stop here. We'll pick up on Wednesday. But the very next step is, now let me just do the next step so you, you know where you are. And maybe you can, if you've got time, you can finish it off at home. Now all we have to do is, um, okay, so you see, this is this part of the equation that we've got ready to solve. And now we have to do, this part, so we would be doing C infinity, which we said was 1.8 milligrams per liter. Plus C, inf C zero minus C infinity, so it's C zero 3.5 milligrams per liter minus 1.8 milligrams per liter times e to the minus 0 0.243 t. So this becomes, what's three and a half minus 1.8? One point seven. Okay. Okay, so we're in a form now here where we can solve for any number of t's, right? If we want to do it in one day, we just plug in day one here. If we want to do it for two days, we plug in day two, plug in two, plug in three, plug in four, and we can recreate that curve, which is what we'll be doing on Wednesday. So a commonly made mistake is combining the 1.8 and the 1.7. You can't because the 1.7 is multiplied by this term. So you've got to solve this first before you can add it to 1.8. And you know that that makes sense because our equilibrium at time equals infinity is 1.8. So all these values that we calculate from time zero to time infinity have to be greater than 1.8. So they have to be somewhere between 3.5 and 1.8. If you get something outside that range, it's wrong. All right, so we're out of time exactly. Not a bad stopping point. So as Dr. Franklin suggested on Wednesday, we'll pick up with this and we will um, finish this up. So come prepared to work on the two homework problems. because we'll, This won't take us very long to do on Wednesday. Come prepared to work on the homework problems, seven and eight. And then on Friday, we'll do collapse. So that's Rwanda for sure this time, chapter Rwanda 10. for sure. <laughs> Watch Hotel Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any quick questions? Are you okay with this? So this will be a lot more fun once you actually start making the graphs. It's been a little bit painful today, um, but it'll, we'll do it again on, on Wednesday so that you'll be clear what we've done and, and then it'll make a lot more sense. We'll be able to create some really cool graphs to show what happens in the concentration over time. So in the meantime, what you want to do is to practice is, is figure out how to do this calculation on your calculators, okay? How do you take something to the E? All right. They don't want to go. They want to do more. More, yeah, I know. It's, it's, yeah, masochism <laughs> Monday. <laughs> <laughs>